My next guests are involved in the most cutting-edge treatments for cancer. You might have heard of targeted therapies for cancer, but now there's a system that will identify with pinpoint accuracy the mutating gene and direct the oncologist to the most suitable treatment for that particular cancer. Professor Gareth Williams is co-founder and medical director of a company called Oncologica. They have developed OncoFocus, and Dr. David Fenley is a consultant oncologist at St. Vincent's Hospital and the Blackrock Clinic. You're both very welcome to the programme. Thank you. Um, Gareth, we'll start with you, first of all. Um, can you explain in layman's terms exactly what uh, your uh, invention or breakthrough was? Right. So, so, uh, so as you were saying, um, first-line treatment for uh, cancer at the moment uh, is chemotherapy, and chemotherapy can be uh, effective as a, as a first-line treatment. Uh, however, for, for a lot of patients, um, the chemotherapy stopped working, and the great excitement in, in biology over the last uh, decade or so is understanding the biology of the disease and then making specific targeted therapies that hit the cancer cells, uh, but the, not the normal cells. Yeah. And there are so many... the question is, how do you match the particular cancer with a particular yes. therapy? So that has been the problem up to now. So there are many uh, very powerful targeted therapies, but the problem is how do you match the, uh, these targeted therapies to the patient's tumour? Now, every patient's tumour is totally unique. It has a, a totally unique uh, DNA profile, DNA mutations. Uh, and the material that we use is, is, is the routine pathology block. Uh, and this, uh, this, is the, this is the standard uh, diagnostic block that pathology uses for diagnosis. So that's the material we need to analyze. So what so, is that? Is that a blood test or what is it? No, so this is the tissue block. A tissue. Uh, and this is really going back to the, to the, to the early 20th century. So this block is, is what every po- hospital archive has. Uh, the problem is that the DNA in that block is actually degraded because it's fixed into formalin. So what we do, the break do, breakthrough that we have, is to take the DNA from the routine pathology block that's in every hospital in the world, uh, and then we've built a platform where we can take that uh, fragmented DNA and screen it for every specific mutation that's linked to each of these targeted therapies. And the reason it's really important to do that is that the frequency of these mutations is only around 0.0 to 2%. So giving a targeted therapy without looking at the unique profile of the patient uh, means that that drug uh, won't work. So it's critical to... uh, So it's a bit like antibiotics. When you're treating infection, it's very important. If you know the infection, then you can specify a particular antibiotic. Now, in in cancer, that's not not occurred because you need technology that's fast, that it has to be cost-effective, and that really is the breakthrough. And what we can do with this technology now is to take patients with advanced cancer where, there's, where, the treat, where the conventional treatment options have been exhausted. And well, really what was very exciting for us is when we looked at these patients and started analysing uh, cases that we could actually identify very powerful uh, treatment options for 85 to 90% of, of patients. Now, now for the patient, what does the test uh, involve? What, what happens to them? Right. So although this is a very uh, complex test in some ways for the patient, um, uh, they don't really they don't have to have another biopsy. They don't have to have a blood test. All that happens is that uh, uh, a, a form is signed. And what the oncolo- Oncologica does is then to retrieve the block, the biopsy block from the hospital. It's transferred for, to Oncologica for testing. And then the block is retur- returned to the hospital. So the patient doesn't need to go into hospital, doesn't need a blood test. Uh, so it's very simple. It's just sit for the the, G, the general practitioner or the oncologist uh, signs the form or the patient themselves. Okay. So, so so there's no intrusion. What the patient is paying for is the on, the analysis at Oncologica. That's correct. Now, once the test is performed, and this is done within 10 days, a report's issued with those treatment options, and this is completely evidence-based. So this is not research. So the report that's issued is prescri- uh, prescriptive, tells uh, the patient exactly what treatment they need, and that's returned to the patient, to the general petitioner, so and the you, oncologist. you have 2,000 uh, targeted therapies that are available globally, uh, and I have a particular cancer, which yes. is, let's call it XYZ yes. uh, cancer, and then you presumably will look at uh, what has been used to successfully treat XYZ cancer somewhere else in the world. That's right. So what? So this is, um, uh, this is a very important point. So this is an evidence base. Now, the evidence based uh, uh, for this comes from the United States. So this comes out of the president's war on cancer. So this is actually one of President Obama's legacies in that he set up uh, the biggest uh, precision oncology program in the world. And this is called the NCI Match Program. And this was a public-private um, partnership between the 20 largest biopharma companies in the world, uh, the National Cancer Institute and the FDA. And really, this had to be done on, a, on, a, on, a, on an enormous scale. 
to generate the kind of data where you can confidently link a uh, patient's mm -hmm. mutation to the drug. So, so this involves 800,000 patients. And these, uh, the NCI program is ongoing. So when new drugs um, uh, um, are, appear and they're introduced into patients at very early phase for, say, phase one trials, that data is incorporated. So the test, the onc onc focus test that we operate is dynamic. So it's updated every 12 weeks. Every 12 weeks yeah. as new information, which is uh, practice-based, not research-based. That's right. It, it comes in, it's added to your database. That's correct. Accordingly. Now, uh, Dr. David Fenley, you've been actually using this uh, test for how long? I have, Pat. For, for approximately the last four four months or so, um, I've been working with Gareth uh, and Marco, our other colleague, over the past year um, to bring this test to, to Irish patients. Um, I, my, my training, I, I'm a medical oncologist who've been in practice now for close to 25 years. Years. And I trained through the era of randomized trials in chemotherapy. Yeah. And these trials involved many thousands of patients. But in, in hindsight, in retrospect, we lacked the biologic and clinical and genetic correlates that we currently have. Because if, for example, you do a big test of a thousand patients, suppose it's a, a particular, say it's a, a leukemia, for example, there may be different forms of leukemia. You're looking at a sample and they're leukemia patients. Exactly. But in fact, there may be A, B, C, D, E and F leukemia patients. So even the benefit of the trial that you did is a bit, you know, it's Ex not 100 exactly. percent. Exactly. Well, you know, our our traditional training as medical oncologists, we trained in specialty. So I trained as a gynecologic oncologist. I trained as a breast oncologist. And, and that thought process is outdated. We no longer want to identify these patient, these tumours as breast or colon or lung. We want to identify these tumours based on the genetic mutation that they have. Because ultimately... So it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter where it is. Ultimately, the genetic mutation that these tumours have will direct therapy and will direct outcome for these patients. Now, we, we, Gareth was talking there about the, the primary treatment that people get and perhaps it fails and therefore you go on to targeted therapies. It strikes me that if you could get if you could start with the targeted therapy and Absolutely. do away with the blunderbuss that is chemo, chemo kills everything. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, it kills the hair and it kills uh, all sorts of cells around the body and the mouth and so on, which has terrible side effects for for the patient. Absolutely. Well, we, we already have, I mean, you know, there, there are good examples of targeted therapy that are currently in practice. And, and perhaps the best example is a drug called Herceptin, yeah. which many people will be familiar with. Herceptin targets the HER2 protein. It's a proto-oncogene. It's present in a wide variety of tumours, but it's perhaps best known in breast cancer. And Herceptin revolutionized the treatment of breast cancer because women with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer could be cured, which had never happened yeah. before. I remember doing something on this before and we were saying the most intractable cancer suddenly became the easiest one to treat. Exactly. Her, so HER2 was a, a clear adverse prognostic factor and identified a particularly bad group. With the advent of Herceptin, we, we changed that. We now have a a vast array and an expanding array of targeted therapies. The difficulty is in selecting these patients. And ideally, what we want as treating physicians, as treating oncologists, is we want that genetic information at the beginning of this journey for the patient. In which case, you don't need to use the toxic chemo, the, the blanket chemo. You can start with the targeted therapy. It, it will undoubtedly spare patients' chemotherapy. We have examples of that already in lung cancer. Lung cancer is one of the most common diseases we treat. And by using this mutation analysis, we can identify genetic mutations that will identify targeted therapies that will be better than chemotherapy. And this is already in practice today. So you've been using this uh, in practice for a few months now. Have yes. you got chapter and verse on people that have really done well on this? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the patients that we have use this test in thus far have largely been patients who have failed three or four different lines of chemotherapy. So there are a group of patients who really are running out of options. And they're also in flithers after what they've been through. Absolutely. Uh, so the, the advantage of this test is to be able to look at their tumour, look at the genetic analysis, identify mutations that we can target with targeted therapies that are more specific and less toxic, giving these patients options which they didn't have. Now, Gareth, the, the, the cost of this test, uh, what does it cost for the patient to pay for the test? So, so the cost uh, of the test with, with generation of the report and follow-up advice and working with colleagues like David, etc., is, is, uh, is 1,800 euro. 
eighteen hundred euro, and the, I mean to we to save a life. I mean that is not well. It it, it provides you with the signpost, David. Now, it, um, what then if the targeted therapy costs uh, you know two hundred k a year or something like that? Well, I think that's that, that's the next step, Pat. I mean, as, as I say. When we when we look and when we deal with the pharmaceutical industry, many of the drugs that come to market have been through a process of phase three randomized trials and, and are then li- therefore licensed. This is in a way the reverse process. Here we're identifying a genetic blueprint. We're telling the patients and the doctors what the targeted therapy is and which one is appropriate. And we now need to get the pharmaceutical companies to come on board with us and make these drugs available. Because if you take some examples, um, you know, certain targeted therapies will be licensed for a specific indication. If you look at a drug like Olaparib, for example, it's a PARP inhibitor. It is licensed specifically in resistant ovarian cancer. With our test, we can demonstrate that this will work in a wide variety of tumor types. So, in other words, uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies who say this is a very rare cancer, we're treating relatively few patients globally every year. Therefore, we've got to charge an arm and a leg to get our research money back. And you're saying to them, hang on a second, not alone will it treat X cancer, but Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Therefore, you'll have a lot more patients to treat. Therefore, mm-hmm. you can bring the, the price down. That's right. To, to identify and target the mutation as opposed to the tumor type. Uh, so that's a, a very promising thing. And of course, uh, I mean, the drug companies, if they were to listen to this, would say um, this is a great day for us, too. Well, I, th- I think it will be. Ultimately, I think there will be a lot of pharmaceutical companies who will be tremendously interested in this. They all have a very large pipeline of drugs in development. They are looking for this type of information to develop new targeted therapies. Undoubtedly, the expansion that we'll see in the next decade will be in targeted therapies. There won't be new chemotherapy drugs. There won't be advances in in further chemotherapy. It'll be targeted agents that are more specific, less toxic and better, more effective. Now, just to explain how the targeted therapies work, I mean, do they only uh, migrate to the cell that is in difficulty or the the gene? That is that what happens? That's essentially what happens. These are these are drugs which identify a specific mutation. We, we know that 75% of the cancers we see now occur related to random genetic events. Yeah. We spent many, many years looking for the causes of cancer. The vast majority of cancers are probably random events. We can identify the genetic mutation. We have a drug which targets that mutation specifically. So this really is a new era in, in cancer therapy. We know about the side effects of uh, regular chemo. What about these targeted therapies? Any of them to have specific and debilitating side effects? Uh, they, they do. Some of them do have side effects. They're generally a lot more manageable than, than some of the chemotherapy effects, but they will be things like dry skin, skin rashes. Uh, they can affect blood cancer. They can affect immunity, so in much the same way as standard chemotherapy. Yeah. But in general, the side effect profile is a lot less than what we would typically encounter with, with standard chemotherapy drugs we use. Yeah, uh, because the, the standard chemotherapy is to hit the rapidly reproducing cells. Correct. So your hair, Correct. Your, the inside of your mouth, things Correct. like that. And, yes. And hence the side effects we have. Last question about the financing of all of this. What about the insurance companies? Have they come on board? Well, I suppose that's the next step, Pat. We've already um, dealt with many of the private insurers, uh, not so much in Ireland as yet, but in the UK and and in Europe. Um, So we have already insurance companies who are covering this test. Um, So one of our next steps is to go to the insurers here and indeed to to the Department of Health, because ideally I'd like to make this available to all our patients who are diagnosed with cancer, because that's where it's going to be hugely valuable. And also uh, you could do some sort of economic analysis, because if you don't waste your time doing the other the stuff um, and uh, time spent in hospital and all of that, perhaps irrespective of the cost of the targeted therapy, it just might make sense. Oh, it's it's economic analyses have been done and, and it is definitely cost effective. This type of information will improve response rates significantly. It lower the cost of treatment and toxicity. Mm-hmm. And finally, uh, Gareth, to you, uh, this is already taken off. Uh, you mentioned Italy, David, and the UK. So yes, it's, it's proven so, it works. Yes, yeah, so we've implemented this uh, in in UK. Can you're wide and both in the private and the state sector. So, so it's obviously in the private sector there's there's, there's insurance, but uh, in Europe, in certain regions of Europe, is that this is being uh, funded and supported by the state. 
Uh, and that's really what we are. Uh, and Pat, if, if I could just say, I mean, th- this test, we, we, we had the official launch on, on Saturday. This test is now available in Ireland. It's available to patients through the Oncologica website, uh, through a, a Dublin number, which we have. I think it'll be up on the News Talk website after the programme. Um, so this is available. I'd encourage patients to discuss it with their GP, with their treating oncologist. And are all the oncologists on side with this? I think that there's going to be a process of, of learning for, for the oncologists. Many of them uh, will be. We had uh, a number of them who turned up for the launch on Saturday. There's a huge amount of interest in this. I think this is a, a slight change in the way we do things. There's always a little bit of resistance to change, but I've no doubt there will be widespread support as people no. become more familiar with and it. And the patient will come in and demand it. That's uh, having exactly. listened to this programme. <laughs> Dr. David Fenley, consultant oncologist at St. Vincent's Hospital and the Blackrock Clinic, and Professor Gareth Williams, co founder and medical director of Oncologica. Thank you both very much.